Question number four <laughs> is the statement of financial positions for Castro Limited uh, as of the 31st of December 2013, the 31st, the 30, oh, the 30th of December, should be 31st of December 2014, uh, as follows. So I've got my uh, 14 and we've got my 13, and we're given our balances. We're also given a summary of income and expenses for Castro for the financial year ending in 2014, and we're given some finance, uh, some income expense, income items there, and we're also given some additional information. And my additional information is that an interim dividend of 90,000 was declared and paid, and a final dividend of 115,000 was declared. The original cost of machinery sold during the year was 340,000, and the accumulated depreciation on that machinery at the time of sale was 140,000. Prepare a fully classified statement of cash shows for December 2014 using the direct method. So that means we have to rebuild some accounts. Now, what I'm going to endeavour to do is tick off every account here and every account here. So, and I'm going to show you some shortcuts that you can use in the exam because really your work is around your operating activities. Okay. Now my operating activities are my current assets, my current liabilities, and my income. So that's what usually fits into my operating activities. Now other items, which are usually in the additional information, so an interim dividend which is declared and paid, where do dividends normally fall in my classifications? Now I've got operating, financing and investing. So dividends declared and paid, financing. Financing relates to equity, dividends relate to equity, equity becomes part of financing. So my operating activities are income expenses, current assets, current liabilities. Financing is equity and non-current liabilities and investing is non-current assets. So, can you guys see that clearly? Oh, yep, you can see. Not really, no? Okay, that's it. Just a bit bright, this light. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna classify. All right, so now what the first thing I need to do is I need to start rebuilding some of these accounts because what I wanna try and identify is What's my cash flow through these two accounts, or these two, or these two, or these two? You know, so from one period to the next period, what's my cash flow? And I always start with my operating activities. So first item I'm going to do, because we're not going to do cash at bank, because that's obviously cash flow, what I'm going to pick on is accounts receivable. Now, my accounts receivable, I don't need to make, I do T accounts, so that's what I like to do. Now my opening balance on my um, accounts receivable is 275,000. So I'm just gonna put an open, 275. And my closing is 157,650. 157,650. Now what increases my accounts receivable? Sales. So I've got sales revenue down here of 3,426,150. So I've got 3,426,150. And obviously, and I'll just put in there sales, so you know what it is. And obviously what decreases my sales, or decreases my accounts receivable is my cash collected. But that's what I want to work out. So if I add these two sides together, I get 150, 701150. So I've got a 3701150 over this side. And therefore my cash collected must be, if I'm going to balance my account, I need to make sure this side adds up. How much is it? 3,543,500. Three million five hundred and forty-three thousand five hundred. 
Now I'm going to highlight that figure because I want to put that figure into my reconciliation later. So that's now ticked off my accounts receivable. The next one I'm going to do is my purchases in relation to my suppliers, which takes into consideration two accounts, inventory and my accounts payable. But firstly, I'm going to do my inventory to work out how much inventory I purchased. So my inventory, I start my inventory with an opening balance of 250. And I've got a closing balance of 255. So what increases my inventory is purchases. What decreases my inventory? Cost of goods sold. And my cost of goods sold hang on, is 2233500. Two, so what I'm looking for is my purchases here. And I don't know what that is, so I'm just going to balance my account out. What do I get? 55, that's 488. 248, 8, 500. So that makes 2488, 8, 500. So therefore, my purchases should be 2238, 8, 500. Now I'm using this piece of information in my next. Um, Accounts payable. So my accounts payable now is my first, it's a liability account. So remember these, my assets are debits, my liabilities are credits, my equity is credits, my income is a credit, my expenses are debits. Okay, normal balances. So my accounts payable, I start with an opening balance of 270. And I've got a closing balance of 185. Now what increases my accounts payable is my purchases. So my purchases I get from this what well, our previous calculation. So 2238500. Zero, zero. And now I'm looking for how much cash I paid. So first I need to balance my accounts. So what have I got there? That's two, that's four, that's five, that's eight. Okay, so two, five, oh, eight, five hundred. And the difference should be my cash. So my cash paid. How much have I got? 185, that's 3, 500, 15. Uh, how much is it? 2, 3, 2, 3, 500. And that should be, I'm going to highlight that number again to indicate that I want to put that into my um, cash flow statement later on. So I've ticked off a few, I've got my cost of goods sales ticked off, I've got my accounts payable ticked off, I've got my inventory and my accounts receivable ticked off. Now I'm looking for other operating activities. So I'm going to complete my operating activities. So I'm looking now down at my expenses. Now, what do we got? We've got accrued expenses payable here. So we've got a payable. So I'll need to take this one into consideration. Uh, what have I got? Okay, so I've got accrued expenses payable. So we're, I want to make sure I work out what the movement through this is because that'll affect how much cash I've paid. Now accrued expenses means, because it's payable, means I haven't paid last year, I'm going to pay this year. So it's going to increase my expenses. But also what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm only capturing the expenses that are cash expenses. Now you can see here that my depreciation expense is going to be a non-cash. So cash flow statements are going to indicate whether you can determine what's a cash flow and what's not a cash flow. And depreciation is just a book entry, so it's a non-cash flow. 
my insurance is going to be in there, rent expenses in there, wages and administration are going to be in there as well. Okay, so let's now go, I'm going to work out what my accrued expense is payable. I want to work out the movement in that and then I'm going to work out what the movement through my operating expenses was. So my accrued expenses, let's have a look where is it, it's gone to here. Started with 65, finished with 30, so it's a credit account. So opening is 65, closing was 35 or 30? 30. So this is 65,000 and this is 65,000. So what's gone to my operating expenses is 35,000. Now it's not a cash movement, well it, maybe it is a cash movement, but we need to include this when we calculate our operating expenses. So my operating expenses now, let's have a look. So my operating expenses. <coughs> now, obviously if I put that in the credit side, debit side here, it's going to appear on the debit side here. So accrued is 35. So I'm going to now tick off. Now, obviously, if it's a debit in this account, it'll be a credit in this account, and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to tick off my insurance expense. I'm going to put these in. Insurance was 90,000. My rent was 285. My wages. was 200 and my admin was 247 500 is that taking care of all those what's the depreciation is on cash I can take care of that I am going to work out the gain on my machinery in a minute uh, so there we go all right so how much do we come up with there? What do we got? Eight, five, seven, five hundred. So therefore, what is my cash paid? Or my cash is eight, five, seven, five hundred for my operating expenses. And obviously if it's in this side, it'll be on the other side in my cash at Bank Ledger. So now that takes care of that. My dividends payable is a finance, financing. So payables for dividends is financing. So I pretty much have ticked off, I've got, this is non-current assets here. These are non-current liabilities. This is all equity. So I can pretty much say I've ticked off all my operating activities. <coughs> 